Greetings, dear friends. Here I am. I'm ready to talk to you about things that are going on in our world. All of these things have to do with Jesus Christ. So if I talk to you at all, I must talk to you about Jesus Christ. We're studying in Romans chapter 6. And I got stopped yesterday on the first line of that first verse. It says, What shall we say then? And it came to me, I better say some things that are very important. So in yesterday's broadcast, I talked about what was happening in the rest of the world. Good Christian people are being killed. Christianity is on its way out here in America. The world is dead set against Jesus Christ. It appears. And you know what? Those in whom Christ lives have become silent voices. They believe in Christ. They love Jesus. But they're not out in the open with it. They're not talking about it. So what shall we say? Shall we continue in this sin that grace may abound? That's what a lot of people thought when Paul got to talking about where in sin doth abound, grace does much more abound. And a lot of people got the idea that where there was sin, that's where grace would come. No, you got it backwards. Grace comes where people trust God and believe Him. The next verse says, God forbid. Who stands against that? This little preacher sitting in Dallas, Texas, am I the one that stands against that? No. God stands against it. God forbids for those who are dead to sin to live any longer in sin. God forgets it. He forbids it. He doesn't like it. It's against his grain. Because human beings don't have to live in sin to be godly, to be children of God, to do great things in this world to be somebody for God in this world. They can do it. They don't have to be great and famous of the world. They can be great and famous in Christ. How great a calling could we have? No greater calling than to be in Christ Jesus. And so he starts off verse 2 in this sixth chapter of Romans and says, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein. Isn't that wonderful? Do you know that the sin of a Christian is something they're already dead to? Do you hear me? Did you know that sinners who claim to be Christian are already dead to that sin? Let me read that again. God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? We're not going to live any longer like that. We're not going to trust God in things like that anymore. We're going to trust God by obeying what he says in this book. All you say, there's not anything else you could talk about. How about talking about reaching a lot of people in church? How about getting our buildings filled? How about the preachers standing up and fighting the devil? How about it, friend? I ask you, how about it? Preachers are not going to change. Churches are not going to change. People living in this world under the beam and banner of Christians are not going to change. They're going to continue on in their sinful ways because they found loopholes in the Word. They didn't get them from Paul. They found them in the Scriptures somewhere. And that's why I've encouraged you to stick with Paul. I'm not against the rest of the Bible. A lot of people get that. But when I first started with this message many years ago, I encouraged people to read only Paul's epistles. And it has proved to be successful. 
because people had a knack of always drifting back to something in the Old Testament, something under Jesus of Nazareth, and they never did get a hold of Paul's message. And the reason for that was that the church didn't preach Paul's message. And so they were either left to do what they felt led to do or do it against the church. I'm telling you what you can do. I'm telling you that if you are saved and you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and he came and placed his life in you, that made you somebody. That made you somebody important. That made you to be what you could never be within yourself. Don't try it. You could never be that within yourself. You could only be that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're ready for the third verse now in this chapter. It says, Know ye not. A better way he could have made that was to say, You better know this. You better know this. This is something you better know. What is it you better know? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Oh, they should have left that out. That's a gory scripture. They should have left that out. He said, Know ye not that as many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. That means when he died on the cross, you were in him. I've said this hundreds of times without exaggeration. I've said that you were in Christ when he died on that cross. Paul says it in Galatians 2.20, I, I am crucified with. I'm killed out. I'm destroyed with Christ on the cross. Other places, it speaks of death. His death is our death. That's what we need. We need a revival of the death of believers. The believers have become something within themselves. They have become somebody within themselves. They have become readers of other books and gotten an idea within themselves that works better than the Bible. They have listened to somebody else on radio and television and they're getting all stirred up about it. Let me tell you, you couldn't be any more stirred than you could be in Romans 6. In fact, as I begin this sixth chapter of Romans, I must tell you that I have put as many as have come to Jesus Christ in this message into Romans 6 first. That's the first chapter they need to live in and concentrate in until it breaks through their brain. Breaks through their brain and they get it in their mind. Somebody's always saying to me, how do I get the mind of Christ? You get in Romans 6 and you begin to learn. You want the first two times you read it or three times. You may have to read it 50 times before you ever get the message because the brain doesn't work like the Holy Spirit does. He's always ready to give us truth, give us Jesus. But we're not ready to receive it. And so when we get ready to receive it, we will know that every one of us were placed in Christ. Now that's not the way it says it. So let's go to the way it says it. It says, Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Every one of us were placed in Christ. That's the baptism. Church world today argues over water baptism. That's a humanity thing. That's not a spiritual thing. That's humanity. So he says here, as many of, as, of us as were baptized into Christ 
as many as were baptized into Christ. How many was that? Everyone that was saved is baptized into Christ. They're placed in Christ. That can mean a lot of things. They're placed in his body, his spiritual body. They were placed in his life. That the life, Paul would say, the life I now live is Christ. People were placed in it. They were placed in it in a certain way that they should never forget it. It says so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ. You were placed in Christ. What, what happened to you? What happened to you when you were placed in Christ? You were baptized into his death. That's so you wouldn't live your own life anymore. God never intended for human beings to live their own life. That's what tore up the Old Testament. Everybody did their own thing, did their own way, disobeyed God. No. He wants us to see here in this verse that we were all placed in Christ and were placed into his death at the same time. Well, that takes us to a very important legalistic truth given to us by Paul. Paul would say that in his death, burial, and resurrection do all believers come to the knowledge of who they are in Christ. It's a knowledge thing. You have been baptized into Christ, but the baptism into Christ starts with the baptism into death, meaning that you may not live this life out. You may not do everything you want to do with it. You may work for God and end up in death. Not a very pretty picture, is it? You'd like to hear something else. They were baptized into Jesus Christ and were baptized into his death. And you got to put all this together. The next verse says, Therefore, this is, this is the baptism into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that likewise, as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. That's a mouthful. That's what a Christian is. That's why the world doesn't like Bible Christians. Because that's a heavy load on Christians' mind. How do I live this? How do I get this out? And the end result is the world thinks they're crazy. The world thinks Christians are crazy when they talk about Christ living in them and they getting there by the death of Jesus Christ. And so this fourth verse is just full of information. We are buried with him by baptism into death. Now strangely as it may seem, religion has changed that baptism into water. That we go down into a deathly grave of water and we come up in newness of life. I'll not argue that point, but that point isn't real. What is real that we were baptized into his death? So that we would come out to a new life. The problem in religion today is that multitudes of people accept Jesus as their Savior but never see themselves buried in the understanding that He is our life. That we died and we're buried with Him. So the next thing that happens when you die, you're put in the grave. Therefore we are buried with Him. I said that. There are three things that must happen to a believer. They are dead, they are buried, they are resurrected. Death, burial, and resurrection. That's the Christian life. 
It must never be forgotten. Never forget that that's the way it's going to be for you day after day. And somebody very good at talking is going to get to you and say, oh, that's hogwash, that's not truth. You better straighten out your life. No, sir. I have been buried with him because I died with him. I have been resurrected with him because that's the way God planned it. And now I walk in newness of life. Let's read on in that verse. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism in the dead, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Oh my. What is walking in the newness of life? Living the Christ that's in you. Got to go. My time is up. God bless you till we meet again. Bye-bye.